Here's an introduction to deadlock. In computer systems, a deadlock is a critical issue that occurs in concurrent processing environments, particularly in multi-threaded applications or operating systems where multiple processes or threads share resources. Deadlock is a state in which two or more processes find themselves unable to proceed because each is waiting for the other to release a resource that they need to continue executing. Without intervention, these processes will remain stuck indefinitely, leading to a system halt for the involved tasks. Deadlock situations arise in systems that manage resources, such as locks, semaphores, memory blocks, files, etc., where multiple entities compete for these resources simultaneously. Managing deadlocks is an essential aspect of resource synchronization to ensure that programs or systems continue to function efficiently without causing blockages or breakdowns in task execution. A classic example of deadlock occurs in the dining philosopher's problem pictured here, where several philosophers sit at a table, each needing two forks to eat but they only pick up one fork at a time. Without coordination, they can end up waiting indefinitely for each other to release forks, causing a deadlock. Deadlocks can happen in a variety of environments, including multi-threaded applications where threads are competing for locks or critical sections, or database systems where transactions wait on resources held by others, or distributed systems where different nodes or machines wait for each other to release shared resources. To manage or prevent deadlocks, systems must follow strategies that either avoid or detect such scenarios. However, understanding how deadlock arises first requires understanding the conditions that must be met for deadlock to occur. So what are the necessary conditions for deadlock? For a deadlock to occur, four necessary conditions must be met simultaneously. These are known as the Kaufman conditions. Number one is mutual exclusion. At least one resource involved in the process is held in an exclusive, non-shareable mode. In this case, once a resource is assigned to one process, it cannot be used by another process until it is released. Number two is hold and wait. A process must hold at least one resource while waiting for additional resources that are currently held by other processes. This creates a dependency between processes for resource acquisition. Number three is no preemption. The resources held by processes cannot be forcibly taken away. Resources can only be released voluntarily by the process holding them, usually after it has completed its task or operation. And number four is circular weight. A closed chain of processes exists where each process is holding one or more resources and is waiting for a resource held by the next process in the chain. This creates a circular dependency where each process in the cycle is waiting for a resource held by the next one. Now let's take a look at a deadlock diagram, a situation which involves two processes, P1 and P2, and two resources, R1 and R2. This is a classic deadlock scenario where each process holds one resource and is waiting for the other, causing a circular wait. Process 1 has already acquired resource 1 and is waiting for resource 2 in order to continue execution but resource two is currently held by process two. To continue execution, process two needs resource one, but resource one is currently held by process one. Neither process can release its currently held resource without first acquiring the other resource, causing a deadlock. This circular chain of dependencies creates a deadlock because both processes are in a state of mutual waiting, and neither can proceed until the other releases the required resource. How does this tie into the four necessary conditions of deadlock? Number one is mutual exclusion. Both resources R1 and R2 can only be held by one process at a time. Number two is hold and wait. Both P1 and P2 hold one resource and are waiting for the other. Number three is no preemption. Neither process can forcibly take the resource from the other. And number four is circular wait. There is a circular chain of dependencies between P1 and P2. This circular wait condition is what ultimately causes the deadlock. The real-world equivalent of this diagram would be two people, each holding a chopstick. Each person needs both chopsticks to eat, but they cannot take the other chopstick until the other person puts it down. Both are waiting indefinitely, causing a deadlock. So what are some types of deadlocks? Number one is system deadlock. It occurs in operating systems when processes or threads are competing for system resources like CPU, memory, and I.O. devices. An example would be two processes stuck waiting for each other's locked files or memory space in an operating system. Number two is database deadlock. 
It happens in database management systems or DBMS when transactions are waiting for locks held by other transactions leading to a circular wait. An example would be transaction one locks row A and waits for row B, while transaction two locks row B and waits for row A. Number three is distributed system deadlock. It arises in distributed systems where multiple nodes across different machines hold resources and wait for each other to release them. For example, node A on server one holds a resource that node B on server two is waiting for and vice versa, leading to a cross node deadlock. And number four is thread deadlock. It occurs in multi-threaded applications where multiple threads block each other by holding locks and waiting for locks held by others.